Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all to this very important meeting Tuesday, January 5th, 2018, in the City Council Chambers. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, we will now have roll call. As I call your name, please indicate your presence with a verbal response. Commissioner Williams. Present. Commissioner Thompson. C Commissioner Youngblood. Commissioner Hoffler. Present. Commissioner G. Present. Commissioner Thaxton. Present. Commissioner Ricks. Present. Five members of the Planning Commission are present. Commissioners, before you are the minister of the May 1st, 2018 public hearing, if there aren't any changes, we are in need of a motion and a second. Commissioner G. Commissioner G. I move for acceptance of the minutes as presented. I second. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the May 1st, 2018 public hearing. As I call your name, please reply with a verbal response. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Hoffler? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. Commissioner Ricks? Yes. The minutes are approved by a vote of five to zero. The min <clears throat> please. Please note our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, July the 3rd, 2018 at 12.30 p.m. Sixth Floor Conference Room, followed by public hearing at 1.30 p.m. City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their July 10th or July 24th, 2018 public hearing or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time if you have not, have not already done so. Our first case, CA-18-02. The city is proposing to modify section 40.1 through 4, 5, F8 and other related sections of the zoning ordinance pertaining to food trucks operating in support of micro distilleries. The amendments will insert a micro distillery into section 4.1 through 4.5 F8. Food trucks on private property along with microbreweries and add a clause that food trucks can operate in conjunction with these uses in the downtown area. Our staff coordinator is Brian Sweats. So this code amendment comes out of the city's ongoing conversations with various stakeholders related to food trucks. So that might be the food truck operators themselves, businesses that want to utilize food trucks, the restaurant industry, and so forth. In this case, what we would like to do is to be able to treat micro distilleries in the same way that we treat micro breweries. So we are going to make a slight amendment to the zoning ordinance, as you see here in red and italicized that would insert the term a micro distillery into the same phrase along with microbrewery. It would also allow for the food trucks to operate in support of either of those two businesses in the downtown area. Just to point out that because this is in the zoning ordinance, does, this does not actually apply to the right of way. This would only be on private property. We already have permission allowed in the zoning ordinance for city to approve food trucks to operate on city property but again this would only apply to operations on private property not into the right of way and i will be happy to answer any questions commissioners are there any questions for mr sweat thank you sir thank you madam secretary thank you mr chairman ladies and gentlemen this is a public hearing on item CA-18-02. I do have a speaker. As I call your name, would you come forward, state your name and your address for the record. You will be given up to five minutes to speak. Our first speaker, Donna Sai. Good afternoon. My name is Donna Sai and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. One of the things that concerns me is this is uh, the first time that I've been aware of this uh, uh, amendment or this zoning ordinance. 
The other thing is, is who is making these decisions on changing this, uh, these codes without the uh, people knowing about it? So this is already up there. Here we are speaking at this time, and whatever we say doesn't matter because somebody has already made the decision. And so that's what I'm finding in the city. And so the planning department is the planning department and the commissioners, and yet we the people aren't knowing ahead of time that this is going to happen. So that's what I'm concerned about with the planning department. Decisions are being made, and then here we are at the last minute seeing this and don't know uh, really why all this was done. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ms. Sai. Our next speaker, Mark Yadali Yatrosky. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, honorable commissioners, and fellow interested parties. In marking my speaker, oh, sorry, Mark Gedulda Gutrowski, P.O. Box 50141, Portsmouth, Virginia. In marking my speaker card, there's a spot for are you, are you uh, in favor of this item? There's a yes and a no. And I wrote in other because my point, my concern, my issue today is the fact that I am not well enough informed on this matter to give you a, a yes or no recommendation. And the reason I'm not informed on this matter is that as of 10 o'clock this morning, the city website did not contain an agenda with staff reports included that was accessible to the public. So the background information that's in your briefing books was not accessible to the public. The only thing accessible to the public as of about 4.30 yesterday was the agenda itself, the bare bones agenda stating what this item is about in high level terms. Also, the planning department is required by law to post a notice, the same notice that appears on the bare bones agenda, in a publication of widespread circulation. So somewhere in the legals, two weeks before this meeting, that description was available. Again, no staff report available to the public. It is my practice of over 40 years of public advocacy, both on this side of the river and the other, to inform myself about issues of public policy before I address them in a public forum. So I did my due diligence. On Friday, I looked for the agenda on the city's website. It was not there. There was nobody to contact because I looked after business hours. First thing Monday morning, I called in to the planning department and expressed my concern about the absence of an agenda with this meeting being on the schedule for today. That was around 9 o'clock. 4 o'clock, I checked the website again to see if the deficiency had been remediated. It had not. I called again. In response to that second call, late in the afternoon, the bare bones agenda went up. The links to the staff reports were not put in then, nor prior to my departure from home today. So, what I am asking for is a deferral on this item because you are not serving the purpose of the public hearing. If the public is not informed about what is before you, I don't believe that anybody could responsibly stand here unless he or she had inside information 
or information shared from somebody with access to the background information on which to base the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yastrowski. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item CA-1802. I have no other registered speakers. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time, state your name and your address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. Commissioners, the chair is in need of a motion for CA 18 02. Uh, can I ask for a point of clarification first? Sure. As I recalled in our minutes for last month's meeting, we did bring up this item in new business. Is that not correct? Um, if you'd like me to address that. Yeah, yes, you, please. You know, this is a code amendment, as, you, as you're aware, under the state code. We require initiation from either the Planning Commission or City Council. This was a Planning Commission-initiated rezoning. We discussed this with the Planning Commission at your meeting in April. And you took the uh, action to initiate the uh, code amendment. It's actually a code amendment. You took the action to initiate that uh, in public at your April meeting. So yes, this is a, uh, was an action that was initiated by the Planning Commission in April. And this was duly advertised um, as required by the code. And while we apologize for the fact that the links weren't there, we've, as you're aware, we've got some staffing shortages. In accordance with what's indicated in our legal ad, uh, all these materials are available in the Planning Department office, which is what the legal ad indicates, that the, the information is, is uh, available for public inspection. Um, however, we do apologize for the fact that the links weren't working, but that's um, uh, something I was not aware of when it was going on. I just found out about that myself. And so, again, we certainly apologize for that. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. I move for acceptance of CA 18 02. Is there a second? A second. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second. As I call your name, please reply with a verbal response. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Hoffler? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. Commissioner Ricks? No. This item is approved by a vote of five to one. No, no, that's four to one. Our next item, UP-18-03. Uptown, Drew Patterson with PL Tower Development LLC is requesting a use permit on behalf of T-Mobile to construct a 150-foot monopole communications tower and fenced compound at 2015 Columbia Street behind Bob Ewell Tire. The property is owned by Neil I. Ewell, trustees, and is zoned heavy industrial. The parcel contains 1.28 acres and is designated within the mixed use corridor on the comprehensive plan's future land use map. The property is also identified as tax map 169, parcel 86. Step coordinator, John Hartley. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, uh, this, as the Secretary just read, this is an application for a use permit to uh, erect a 150-foot uh, monopole communication tower at 2015 Columbia Street. Uh, there's a little bit of history uh, that's probably worthwhile discussing uh, at the front end of this application. This is actually the third application that has been uh, submitted uh, by uh, Mr. Patterson and PL Tower Development on behalf of T-Mobile. Um, the first was a piece of property that was owned by PRHA that was uh, deemed unsuitable for a, a, a range of reasons. Uh, their second application was one that uh, you, can, you uh, uh, considered uh, in the last six months. I, I don't remember exactly which meeting. Uh, it was the, the proposed tower that was uh, almost directly adjacent to the Westbury community. 
and the Planning Commission actually recommended denial by a close vote, and the City Council uh, denied it uh, also. And I think it was withdrawn before the second, second reading, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is their third attempt to locate a site along the 264 MLK connector uh, corridor. Um, and the property is zoned uh, light industrial. It's uh, located behind Yule Tire uh, Company, um, which is on uh, Columbia Street. Actually, the, the, the tire company um, is one block off of, of uh, County Street. Uh, this is an aerial photo. The, the location of the tower that's proposed is where the Red Star is located. Uh, the site that was proposed earlier was uh, on the triangular piece, uh, again, uh, adjacent to Westbury. Uh, they've essentially moved it on down uh, the, the, the railroad property, which is the bulk of the wooded and open area here, um, and uh, entered into a lease agreement with uh, the Yule family uh, and trustees. Uh, again, what's proposed is a 150-foot mono, uh, monopole uh, tower uh, along with an equipment uh, compound uh, similar to other uh, cellular sites that you've seen. Um, in, in terms of T-Mobile's, well, uh, this is a, a copy of the site plan, uh, the general site plan. It's, a, uh, again, a triangle-shaped property. Um, and then an elevation that just gives you a, an idea of uh, what a 150-foot tower might look like next to a six or eight-foot fence. Uh, one of the reasons T-Mobile has been anxious to get a facility in this, in this area is the light green area is an area where uh, there are issues with the coverage. And um, so they're proposing a tower in that area, which would then um, uh, fill in that gap. Um, and then a couple of pictures of what it would look like on the ground. Uh, they do a, what's called a balloon test and then uh, do a, uh, insert a tower to that height. Uh, this one is from uh, County Street, uh, and the second one is from um, uh, Route 164 and Turnpike Road. Um, the issues with this are very similar to those that, that you dealt with, uh, with the uh, tower down by uh, uh, Westbury. Uh, it's, zoned in, it's zoned industrial. Uh, the nearest residences are uh, more than 400 feet away. Um, and uh, but it's, it's in that zone of industrial. Um, so staff is recommending approval. There are a number of conditions. Uh, most of them are fairly standard conditions for cell towers. There's one additional comment about or condition that's recommended dealing with tires, waste tires, and, and how they're stored on this particular property. With that, I'll answer any questions. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Hartley? Was there any correspondence from the uh, neighboring uh, businesses or residents? Uh, we have not received any comments whatsoever at the staff level, either written, uh, email, or otherwise. Um, so we, we really haven't heard anything from the public. We did send letters out. It has been advertised. There is a sign on the property. Any additional questions for Mr. Hartley? Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-18-03. I have several speakers. As I call your name, come forward, state your name and your address for the record. Lisa Murphy. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. For the record, my name is Lisa Murphy. I'm a local, local attorney with an office at 440 Monticello Avenue, uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, 
and I am here today on behalf of the applicant PI Tower Development, LLC. I have with me today Eric Para, who's a radio frequency engineer for T-Mobile, as well as Roger Hewitt with NBNC, uh, who has uh, spent almost two years now trying to find a location to put antennas to help um, support T-Mobile's network in the area. Uh, not to belabor the point, but just to go back a little bit, uh, as most of you know, the increase, uh, the dramatic increase in wireless-only households, which is now just over 51 percent, has really driven the demand for antenna sites closer and closer to homes. Um, the reality of the situation is the only way to provide service to people in their homes is to have antennas somewhere close by. Uh, and as you all know, that's, that's been a challenge for us and, and for the entire industry. Add to that, you have um, usage increasing dramatically, where you now have 67% of consumers watching videos via their mobile phones. Uh, people like myself ordering from Zulily and other websites from their phone, sitting at a light, or sitting in a parking lot, or waiting for a meeting to start. Um, you also have 40% you know, of millennials now shopping on cell phones. So this dramatic increase in both usage uh, and types of uses has really dramatically increased the need for more antenna sites and for more capacity on existing sites. The area that you have before you, if we could go back to the before and after propagation map, um, shows you where T-Mobile, uh, who would be the initial user on this tower, has a need in their existing network of sites. Uh, T-Mobile, just like most of the other users in the area, are co-located on existing antenna sites. So typically, a carrier doesn't want to have to build a tower if they can find someplace tall to hang their antennas. It's cheaper, and it's much faster than having to go through this process. Uh, so as John indicated, this process actually goes back to the fall of 2016, even, when Roger uh, was given the instructions to look for a site to help fill this gap. And you, you see the after. The next slide shows you what happens with antennas at this location. So they start the search. They have to find a willing uh, landlord because they lease the, the site for the structure uh, and they don't have condemnation rights. They have to find a site that's big enough, that meets zoning requirements, that meets setback requirements. Uh, and that's a lot of history to tell you that hopefully the third time in this, in this case will be the charm. Uh, we started with the PRHA site on Elm Avenue, as uh, Mr. Hartley indicated. We moved to the, the treed lot that's uh, behind Westbury that we thought would be a better location because of the tree buffer and because of the fact that it was zoned industrial. Uh, we're not successful there. And Roger went back out and said, let's, let's try to find something. So the site that you have before you today uh, on the Ewell property is actually the culmination of almost two years worth of work at this point. Um, and that's important because it shows you just how important finding an antenna location in this particular area is to T-Mobile and, you know, hopefully the three other uh, carriers who could co-locate on this tower as well. So this, this has been important enough to them that we continue the search and, and again, hopefully at this point we found a location um, that is going to work. It's an industrial property, heavy industrial. Um, I can tell you that the tires have already been removed from the site. Uh, it's based on my understanding from Mr. Hewitt, uh, and that's one of the conditions that you discussed in the informal session. The tires are already gone. The property understands that they can't store tires on that, on that property anymore. The property's uh, 1.28 acres. It, um, it does meet your zoning ordinance and your comprehensive plan requirements, um, and it is, as Mr. Hartley indicated, uh, significantly Ms. Murphy, buffered. You, you mm -hmm. have one minute. I, I can wrap up pretty quickly. Um, for all the reasons stated in the staff report, uh, as the staff indicates, this is a superior site to the others that we've looked at. We think we finally found that solution in that intersection of all of the competing interests uh, where we can build a tower here and allow co-location by T-Mobile and three other users so that we can enhance the wireless coverage in this part of the city. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you all might have. Commissioners, are there any questions of Mrs. Murphy? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Our next speaker, Mr. Mark Yadaldi Yatrosky.
Good afternoon again, Mr. Chair, honorable commissioners, and fellow interested parties. Uh, my information is the same as it was previously. So rather than repeat what I said earlier, because I assume you all were doing your due diligence and listening attentively, let me further clarify my issue here. But let me say that I'm not going to conclude with a recommendation for deferral, because in this case, there is an actual applicant who is out of pocket for application fees. And so a deferral would not be equitable to them. However, what I would like from you is an expression of the concern of your body about what has transpired in leaving the public inadequately informed about today's proceedings. It would be nice if you would formulate, not, not where you're sitting, but consider this matter and formulate a resolution indicating that it is the will of the Planning Commission that the public be adequately informed in advance of all future Planning Commission meetings. And I have heard that there are certain extenuating circumstances, but the fact that you meet each month, unless you have no applications pending, but the fact that you meet each month is a known fact. And there should be preparations made so that if there should be some unfortunate or unforeseen occurrence, the basic, the basic task of informing the public will go forward. I hope you take my meaning. People take vacations, people get sick, emergencies come up, but there needs to be a plan B to ensure that the public is informed. And let me speak to Mr. Baldwin's point about the fact that the law has been followed. There is the letter of the law and there is the spirit of the law. Now, yes, certainly you all have information that's available by people making a trek to the planning department from wherever it is in the city that they live. But you also have a well-established procedure of ensuring in this digital age that there are links to that information. So it's not necessary for people to burn fossil fuel or expend energy in other fashion to get information that would reasonably be accessible to them through the auspices of the internet. I appreciate your attention, and I hope you will reflect on my recommendations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ostrowski, you know, the commission is duly advised of your concerns. It will be absolutely critical that in the future that we'll ensure that this does not happen again. Thank you. Yes, sir. Our next speaker, Mr. Roland Carpenter. Good afternoon, distinguished commissioners and secretary. Uh, my name is Roland Carpenter. I'm president and chief executive officer of GI Industrial Marine. My administrative office is located directly across the street uh, from this proposal at 2100 Columbia Street. My office is probably the closest office to this building, even outside of those on the Bob Yule property. Uh, I'm here today because I was properly notified by the city uh, through this letter that this event was taking place. And uh, since it was in my court, I knew I had uh, some outside interest in this. Uh, our tax revenue base to the city right now uh, is about $30,000 a year. We run a ship repair uh, company. Uh, we hire 125 people locally in this area. And we've just been awarded contracts for military sea lift. We're awaiting NOAA Coast Guard 
We have an IDIQ contract for Norfolk Naval Shipyard and a contract for the submarine fleet in Norfolk Naval Shipyard. So thanks to your help last year, um, God's been smiling on us. Fortunately for these guys, I started with Family Mobile. I went to Verizon. I went to Sprint. I couldn't find what I was looking for with Sprint and Verizon. So my phone and my company is now offering, uh, uh, operating on the T-Mobile network. So uh, that was a good thing to find out that T-Mobile was coming in the neighborhood because when I leave and go certain places like where I hunt, I don't have access uh, with the other servers. So T-Mobile has been my service for choice. I'm here today because I had two questions. First of all, building a tower that close, will it compromise the service that we now have, which is excellent? And their answer to me was no. Second of all, cancer. You know, I want to live. Uh, is there any risk of cancer being that close to an operation of this nature? And again, I was asserted that that would not be an issue. That said, uh, I think on behalf of my company, who for the last five years have taken those mosquito bites from those tires that were located on that property, and a couple of residents that I spoke to who didn't even know the tires were gone, but were so elated when they found out that these guys deserve a round of applause for me on behalf of my company and uh, a solid push to go ahead and engage in this endeavor if it's going to give me better coverage and allow me to operate better as well as the people who uh, 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 enjoy this service. I do know that uh, Family Mobile, the Walmart network that I was on before I switched to T-Mobile, also uses those towers. So this will help a lot more people than it will hurt. I just wanted to make sure that fact was there. I've given them my cards. Uh, I make myself available for the future hearings and proceedings and my uh, services is needed. And and again, I can't thank your commission if you stipulated it and those guys who uh, initiated the removal of those tires enough. I was willing to pay for it myself if I could find somebody to take them damn tires, okay? Thanks for letting me share. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks. Yeah, no. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-18-03. If there is anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. Commissioners, the chair is in need of a motion for UP 18-03 with conditions. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application with conditions. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second to approve UP-18-03 with conditions. As I call your name, please reply with a verbal response. <clears throat> Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Hoffler? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. Commissioner Ricks? Yes. This item is approved five to zero with conditions. One additional item, uh, commissioners. Uh, commissioners, we'll be meeting with the city council on Monday, June 25th. Is that the correct date? Mm -hmm. 2018 at 6.30 p.m. on six the six, at six o'clock. I have another meeting at 6.30, so I run from one to the other. <laughs> at six o'clock in the 6-4 council uh, workroom, our bylaws state that we are in need of a vote for this special meeting. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I call your name, commissioners, please respond with a verbal response. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Hoffler? Yes. Commissioner G? Yes. Commissioner Thaxton? Yes. Commissioner Ricks? Yes. Five members of the Planning Commission have responded. Commissioners, are there any other questions or discussion? Mr. Baldwin, any um, yes. additional thing? We have nothing additional, Mr. Chairman, other than to uh, indicate we look forward to seeing you all again on the 25th. 
We look forward to being here. <laughs> Madam Secretary. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Then that concludes our meeting for today. I think it's still your pen.